Welcome back to the Product Alignment Podcast. In this segment, I'm excited to dive into the topic that has become more and more relevant in recent years, artificial intelligence. To help make sense of what's happening in AI, the hype versus reality, and how leaders should think about adopting AI, I'm joined by Chris Ye. As a veteran of Silicon Valley with over 20 years in tech and entrepreneurship, In startups, Chris has seen firsthand how new technologies like AI go through cycles of hype and disillusionment. In our conversation, Chris provides a great overview of explaining where AI is today, how it compares to human intelligence, and why now is the time it's really hitting an inflection point. He shares the analogy of AI being like a smart undergrad research assistant, capable of doing tremendous work but also with clear limitations compared to human capabilities. I hope you enjoy this insightful segment as we explore the current state of AI and how leaders should be thinking about leveraging its possibilities. Now on to the discussion with Chris Ye talking about AI. Well, I want to I want to go on to this other topic that uh, you started to peel back the layers on when we met a few weeks back about AI. And obviously this uh, is yes. the hot thing right now. Everybody's talking about AI. People are trying to understand it, who are new to it, being in tech for 20 plus years. It's all I've been hearing about on and off through all the different iterations of AI for the last two decades, but it's starting to hit an inflection point and it's really starting to transform the way that we can interact with the technology and what's possible. But I also think there's a lot of challenges here where the promise of AI has far surpassed what its actual capabilities are, at least today. And that's going to change, obviously, pretty soon, I think. But there are a lot of, I think, confusion and those that are really at the heart of of this industry and understand the technology, you know, have a very different perspective on what's happening. I'd love to tap into to what you're seeing there. I know you've been, you know, in the middle of that um, for the last several years now and would love to have you share with us what you think is happening and where you think that's going to go. Absolutely. And I can tell you I've had multiple AI conversations just today. And it is the biggest thing to hit in my lifetime. The high level headline is that the current AI revolution that is underway is probably the biggest economic change to humanity since the Industrial Revolution. So nobody alive has seen anything like this before because it represents just a complete phase change. The Industrial Revolution was about the substitution of mechanical power for muscle power. Before, everything had to be human muscle or animal muscle, and so we were highly limited. Afterwards, we brought in mechanical power. We could be many times the strength of a human or a horse. Like, look, notice the fact we talk about the horsepower in our cars. And, you know, even an underpowered car will have like 150 horsepower. Just imagine a herd of 150 horses, how big that is, and compare that to the size of your average Honda Fit. I mean, good Lord, the power is just so much greater. Unreal. And the same, same thing is happening for AI, except instead of being muscle power, we're replacing human brain power with computing power. And again, that computing power can be just more concentrated, more portable, and all these other things than human brain power. And that's why we're going to have so many different changes along the way. Now, that's a high level. Now, the other thing is, well, what is it that's actually triggering this now? And it's largely thanks to chat GPT, a term that almost everyone has probably heard a million times over the past couple of months. Very few people even know what GPT stands for. It stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. That means that it is AI that is capable of generating content. It's pre-trained, in this case, on the content of the internet circa September 2021. And it's a transformer in the sense that it's not like it can change into a car or a robot, but rather that it can take things from one language or one sort of set of parameters and change them into another. So it can change English into Spanish. It can also change English into whatever it is that Donald Trump speaks. It can also reformat an annual report from the Walt Disney Corporation into Shakespearean sonnets or whatever else you choose. And that is tremendously powerful. However, as you point out, there is so much excitement that sometimes people lose sight of what AI actually is. What it is right now is a giant pattern matching tool. 
and it's very good at matching patterns and putting out what is boilerplate. And the, the guideline I use is if what you're trying to produce is bland, inoffensive, middle of the road, uninnovative prose, AI's got what you need. It's great at doing that. If what you want to produce is a brilliant poetry, a moving novel, or any of these things, the answer is it's not really that good at it yet. Maybe it'll get better over time, but not yet. And there's reasons why it won't be able to grow exponentially from here. We're at this period of time where AI is growing incredibly fast because people have been able to feed more and more information into the models. But one of the funny things is, if you think about it, the internet circa 2021 is pretty big. We can update it to the internet circa now, and that's adding some to it, but it's not like we're going up in order of magnitude of data. We're just running out of data to run through these models. And so the general models are not going to get that much more powerful that quickly, but they're still already incredibly powerful. And the way that I like to think about this, and again, I give full credit to my uh, my co-author, Reid Hoffman, who is the one who is smart enough to go ahead and begin investing in AI several years ago. I wasn't smart enough to do that. Uh, Reid says that you can think of the AIs that we have right now as being a smart undergrad research assistant. So what does that mean? Well, it means it's pretty smart. You can give it some vague directions and it can actually do stuff. And it can go out there and collect information and bring it back. It can write up a report. All these things are incredible because no computer system five years ago could have done anything of the kind. So it's amazing. But it's also still just an undergrad research assistant. Like if you're an expert, the output is not going to be up to snuff. I've asked many experts about their field of study and say, well, how is the AI doing on that? And they're like, oh, it's pretty bad. Yeah, it's not very good at all. I'm like, okay, you've seen it do some other, oh yeah, it's amazing. You can write poetry, you can do that. I'm like, what do you think the poets think of this thing? They think it's terrible. Just today, there, I was talking with a computer scientist who was saying, yeah, you know, the, it's doing amazing things on the art side, but when it comes to code, it's really not that good. And I said, hold on for a second. I've talked to a number of artists and they're all like, this thing is garbage. You only think it's great because you don't know anything about art. And so that's what's happening all over, right? Anything that you know a lot about, you're like, this AI is garbage. Anything you don't know a lot about, you're like, this is incredible because we are mistaking one kind of magic for another. The magic of the AI is that it is so fast and so cheap and so comprehensive. And it is faster, cheaper, and more comprehensive than any human could be. It's superhuman in those respects. But when it comes to being original, when it comes to creating great content, when it comes to coming up with insights, it's subhuman. It's not even close. Yeah. And so we allow one form of wonder to then color our perceptions. It's like people saying, well, Tony Stark can create an Iron Man suit, so of course he can build a time machine. No, that's not how science works. That's just how movies work. So that's why AI is so exciting, right? It is transformative. It's putting the power of an undergrad research assistant into every one of our hands. People are going to find ways to verticalize it and find just incredible ways to do so much work, so much faster, so much cheaper than ever before. But I do want to reassure people that this is not about terminators coming to destroy us all. This is not about machines becoming self-aware and, and setting out to, to destroy humanity. That's not something that's going to happen. What is going to happen, however, is dislocation as people who are armed with AIs will be able to be 10 times as productive as people who don't use AI. Well, guess what? Over time, we consume productivity. Uh, I often use the analogy with audiences these days. I tell them, when I was an undergrad at Stanford, I had a Macintosh SE that had a 20 megabyte hard drive. And that's the amount of memory I had to get me through four years of college. And today, my Microsoft Outlook file expands by 20 megabytes every 15 minutes or so as people send me these freaking enormous PowerPoint presentations and everything else, right? We consume the additional productivity. So I have no doubt that over the long term, it doesn't matter that AI has made us all 10 times more productive. We'll find a way to use up that productivity to make our lives better. But there will be dislocation along the way. And so the best advice I have is for people to get ahead of this, to be early adopters of this new technology. Because late adopters or people who try to avoid adopting at all, the Luddites, they're going to be wiped out because they will not be able to compete. So that is the best overview of AI and how to think about it that I've heard, hands down. Oh, and thank you. One of the key things that you touched on is 
you know, it can't replace basically expertise, can't replace context, yeah. the human component that makes the composition of whether you're a great artist or a great writer or a poet, as you said, sing or, you know, potentially, you know, writing that brilliant line of code that thinks about, you know, yeah. organizing, you know, or structuring that experience a little bit differently. One, one of the key things that, that I'm always curious about, again, is coming back to that human side of the technology, because it is this incredible enabler that is going to be yeah. game changing when it does come to amplifying human potential. And I, I, I see that. I recognize that. And I, th I love the research assistant analogy. It's going to accelerate the ways that we can do things. The challenge that, that I wonder about and I think about quite a bit is for leaders, here's now this sea change of technology coming. It's something that, as you said, hasn't happened in your lifetime. It's, 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 this, it's this first time event like, you know, the Industrial Revolution how do leaders, you know, current product leaders, founders, people that are working to get to a phase where they can be growing and scaling their business, how do they need to be thinking about this past the value about how do they actually make good decisions with the technology? And are we even at a place where we can answer that kind of question yet? So I think we are at a place where we can at least give some general answers to that question. And I do think that the tools of blitzscaling help here in the sense that blitzscalers already have to deal with extreme change at extreme speed. And that is something that is now coming for all of us, thanks to AI. I think that if you are the leader of an organization, you have to understand that your organization has to adopt AI, has to. Again, there may be certain or like if you run a hot dog cart, I don't know how much AI is going to change your life there. And I, this is one of the great ironies. In fact, some of the blue collar professions will be safer, so to speak, for the time being, because it is almost impossible to automate via AI. Mm -hmm. Someday, maybe, but not yet. Uh, uh, how does chat? You can ask chat GPT, hey, how do I fix that clogged toilet? But guess what? It's not plunging it for you. Robots are hard and AI is easy in comparison. So there's an irony there. But in most companies, especially companies that are doing knowledge work, which is your company and all the companies that I'm involved with, you're going to have to adopt the AI. And the thing is, leaders, you're helping to steer this. You've got to lead by example. You've got to start using the stuff yourself. And this is one of the things which I've told audiences, which is it's very appropriate that there is this new movie air out about Nike and how it grew in the 1980s because of Michael Jordan. And the motto of Nike is just do it. And that is the thing. It's great that people are reading articles about AI, maybe even stuff that I write about AI. Hey, I'm grateful. But the only way to really understand it is to use it yourself, to experiment with it. And AI is so fast and so cheap that instead of planning and thinking, it's better to just do. This is the Top Gun Maverick advice, right? Don't think, just do. And you'll learn so much from doing and you'll be so much more accomplished from doing than you would ever do from trying to plan it out in advance. Because guess what? I was talking to another AI researcher today and he said, you know what? I'm speaking at a conference in two weeks. I'm not going to bother trying to put my slides together until the week of the conference because things are changing so quickly. Whatever I did now, I would have to throw out by next week. So you just got to do. And it's scary that things are changing so quickly and so constantly, but it's also exciting because it means there is tremendous opportunity for everyone. Yeah, I that's fantastic. I, you know, one of the key things that we've run into recently is is building the interfaces to AI. How mm -hmm. do you actually enable people to interact with it um, to actually power forward? And that's that's definitely that's a human problem to solve. You know, AI won't do that for us. So there's a Absolutely. lot of these types of use cases where they're an incredible tool to really needing to tap into that to help um, make that technology accessible to people so they can so they can so they can so they can get into it. Um, I've got this great example. I was talking with a guy who is using AI for movie making. He wants to make movies using AI. Obviously, it's something that a lot of people would be interested in. And he says, you know, we always have humans in the loop because you know what? The AIs are great 
at generating. The AIs are great at a lot of things. They're not great at knowing what human beings will actually respond to, yeah. except by you know pattern and boilerplate and things like that. So that is the secret if you are a human being, which is bring your humanity to bear, but use the AI to then act as the accelerator, as the leverage. Thank <laughs> you.